the cathode ray tube is the basis of uh, TV screens that use what we call CRT tube. Now, those are the TVs that uh, were used during the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st century. Now, looking from the back inside the tube, uh, we have something that looks somewhat like this. We have cutouts here to show us the inside. Now, the crux of a cathode ray tube is what we call the cathode. The cathode is a sort of an electron gun, is a place where we uh, allow electrons to break free and be accelerated to some high velocities so they can continue forward. Uh, in the particular case of color TVs, we have three electron guns. You see here the one that's generating what's shaded here in blue. Electrons are not going to have colors, but this is just to represent what's happening. And then another electron gun here that's shaded in green, and another electron gun that's shaded in red there, a little bit behind the blue. Now, uh, we have coils. We have a coil, for example, to focus the beam of electrons so it is not spread out and it comes out as one point when it hits the back of the screen. Now, the back of the screen is made up of um, uh, fluorescent material, three types of fluorescent materials. One that's going to fluoresce blue, one is going to fluoresce green, and one is going to fluoresce red. Now, each one of these is going to fluoresce only if it is excited by the proper gun, the gun with the proper energy that's going to allow that material to fluoresce. The green gun is going to make the green fluorescent fluoresce. The blue gun is going to make the blue uh, fluorescent material fluoresce and so on. Now, the, the beam itself of electrons, this is... Uh, what we have seen with the CRT, with the cathode ray tube before, is going to be deflected by a magnetic field, by changing the value of, magne uh, of the magnetic field. So we use coils for that magnetic field, so it's an electromagnet, uh, instead of a static magnet whose value is constant, we can change the value of the magnetic field more easily by changing the current through the coils. And that's what we use to move the beams throughout the screen, these three beams throughout the screen. Okay, uh, I'm going to show a simplified illustration of how an image is formed on a screen. Okay, we go to the simulation here. So the idea is, what we do is, we have one electromagnet, I'm moving it here by hand, that's going to allow the beam to move up and down. And then another electro, uh, electromagnet, in this case it's represented by this, that's going to move the beam sideways. Now, uh, the way the picture is formed is dot by dot. So it starts from the top uh, right of the screen, goes down till it reaches the bottom. Due to the persistence of vision, our eyes are not going to see it as dots. They are going to see a complete picture. However, the complete picture is made point by point. And the increased number of points provides a better resolution uh, and a clearer picture. This is another view of the screen of a color TV. You can see something like this on your TV. Um, for example, you can turn it on and use a magnifying glass and you see the dots like this. Uh, an alternative is to put just a drop of water on the screen and turn it on and you'll see that the drop of water would act for you as a magnifying glass. Now for LCD screens, uh, the dots has, are going to look a lot more like small line segments like this. It's the same principle, red, green, and blue. And actually, the way we see the colors, this is a good way of representing it. You see, for example, something is going to look red if only the red fluorescent material is excited. 
green if only the green blue if only the blue if all the if all of them are excited we are going to get white if none of them is excited we are going to get black and that's the way we get the colors and we kind of mix and match another view of this you see for example here we are seeing part of the word foot on a screen liquid crystal displays the new tvs that are coming out into the market right now they have a more difficult principle uh, to get the picture from uh, the main idea uh, for the screen is the same but how to get the image is quite different in this case we start with a polarizer it's actually an lcd screen is made up of two polarizers one here and one here and notice that the polarizers are such that they are perpendicular to each other meaning light is not going to be able to pass through if we just keep those polarizers and what happens here the minute your signal is out what we have this is what we call the liquid crystal it's some material that based on the voltage that we subject it to it can twist the, or it can rotate the polarization of the light that's being transmitted so, for example, this light here is changing from this polarization to this polarization. So, it's going to be able to be transmitted. Well, this one is not affected at all because the voltage between these two uh, was kept at a particular level where it does not change the polarization. So, once it reaches here, it's going to be blocked. Okay, another view of this. So, this is the light, this is your first polarizer. In this case, the polarization is shown along these axes. And then what we are going to have, this is our liquid, uh, this is our liquid crystal. And then we have some transistors, fast transistors that are going to subject this liquid crystal the voltage levels that are needed and we have one for each color very much like the electron guns for each of the electron guns now uh, as we come here we have filters one for each of the colors and then we have the second polarizer this is our screen now the red filter is going to allow only red light green filter and so on 